Hi there, I'm Carrie Collins from Stretch Chi in Chicago. I'm coming to talk to you a little bit today about some of the problems that plague endurance athletes, specifically runners. We have a ton of runners right now starting their marathon program, their marathon training, and I really want to make sure that they're healthy and working in a great way. A lot of people notice as they start to kick up their mileage that they have problems like low back pain, hip pain, um, IT band syndrome, Achilles pain issues. A lot of these problems are actually caused by weak hip flexors, specifically the psoas muscle group. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the psoas muscle today and give you some exercises to figure out if your psoas muscle is a problem and how to fix that. Really simple with a basic method that we use at Stretch Chi called Kihara resistance stretching. By using Kihara, you can stretch and strengthen this muscle group and not only avoid the injuries that are associated with the weak psoas muscle, but you can actually improve your pace, improve your cadence, and have a really wonderful marathon experience. This amazingly complex muscle group propels us through life every day and protects us from danger. The psoas muscle group is commonly referred to as the hip flexors. It's made up of three muscles, the psoas major, the psoas minor, and the iliacus. And together as a team, they work to lift your legs up towards your chest. They start here at the lumbar spine, work their way through to join the top of the iliacus at the top of the hips, and then come all the way down and reach through and grab the inner trochanter, which is a notch just at the top of your femur. It forms sort of a hammock. It's like a cradle for your inner organs and also um, holding your center of gravity, your heart. It's responsible for pulling your knees up towards your chest. It's the only muscle group that connects your legs to your spine. Now, if you've ever found yourself in a fetal position, it's your psoas that's doing that work to pull your knees in towards your chest. It rounds your spine and protects all of your vital organs and protects us when we're in danger. And we use our psoas during everyday use too, just walking and running to lift the leg with little or no effort at all. When the psoas seizes, walking, running, Standing up straight, even laying down flat on your back can be excruciatingly painful. Because the psoas connects to the lumbar spine, it can cause low back pain. And in extreme cases, especially if one side's pulling a little bit more than the other, it can cause disc herniations. Now, the psoas is also connected to all sorts of other movements in the hips, so hamstrings can become an issue. And if hamstrings become an issue, the IT band becomes an issue, and the Achilles tendon becomes an issue, you can have groin injuries. All of these things can be fixed in some way or improved by strengthening and stretching the hip flexor muscle group. It is so important during your marathon training to make sure that your psoas is healthy and happy. So why is it so important to have a strong and flexible psoas muscle as an endurance athlete? As a runner, especially if you're working through marathon training, you have to make sure that the psoas is strong and flexible so that you can stay injury free and stay out of pain, but also so that you can improve your cadence, keeping a good harmony and rhythm in your body, making sure that you feel really safe and comfortable, that your body's working in the most efficient way possible, and also that you're getting a lot of good power through your swing phase. The psoas is the active muscle that pulls you into the swing phase of your running so that you can propel forward. Let me show you how this works. When I go into a position like I'm going to take a step forward to run, my psoas lifts my leg up, bringing me into, the, into this position, pushing my force of gravity in front of me so that I have to come down and kick my leg back. Bringing the other leg up, the psoas creates that cadence. This shifts my center of gravity forward, and as I come down to the ground in the swing, I have to kick back, propelling me even more forward. Each time you take a step, the psoas has to lift up to make sure that you don't fall on your face, and also creates the swing phase motion that creates more power through your stride. And the psoas up, and without it, that propelling force 
wouldn't be there to push you forward. When your psoas isn't acting properly, then the muscles get confused and it changes the way the propelling force moves in a forward motion and shifts it to kind of an angled position. You may notice when you're running if your gait is, um, if you're coming out to the side, if you find that you're running like this, as opposed to straight ahead, or your knees are coming out a little bit when you run, then you've got a psoas issue. Your cadence isn't working in the best way possible. So how do you tell if you have a problematic psoas? There are a few simple tests. First, we're gonna test our strength. And we do that by standing on one leg, lift your knee up so that your femur is just a little bit higher than parallel to the floor, and add a little resistance by placing your hand on your raised thigh. Hold it for three seconds. One, two, three, release. If during that time you had any pain or discomfort in your hip or in your low back, then that psoas on that side is weak. Let's try the other side too. Bring your leg up a little bit higher than parallel to the floor. Put a little pressure down with your hand and hold for three seconds. One, two, three, and release. Any pain or discomfort in your hip or low back and your psoas is weak, so you need to focus on strength training. The next test is more flexibility. You do this by laying flat on the floor. Bring your legs down flat, grab one leg, and squeeze it in towards your chest, and if you notice your other leg pop up off the floor, then your psoas is tight on that side. There's a flexibility issue on that, on the side of the low leg that's laying flat. Try the other side. Lay the leg flat on the floor. Pull your knee in close to your chest. And if you notice your leg pop up, then you've got a flexibility issue on that side. The most efficient way that I've found to stretch and strengthen your psoas muscle is through a method called Kihara resistance stretching. We do Kihara at my studio in Chicago called Stretch Chi. You can also find plenty of resources on my website, stretchchi.com. Now, to do Kihara, we have three rules. The first rule is we always move all the time. We never hold any stretches. The second rule is that we resist all the time. We're using a form of strength training called eccentric strength training, which grabs the belly of the muscle and pulls it apart right from the inside of the muscle as opposed to from the outside of the tendons. So we're always using resistance. And the third rule is that we only move in ranges of motion that feel really good. We want to stay out of pain as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead into a nice stretch for our hip flexor. This is a lunge stretch. Come down onto your knees. Keep your left leg behind you while you bring your right leg up front with your foot out pretty far away from your knee but not completely straight. I'm going to engage the muscles in the front of my hip by trying to drag my knee in towards my chest, similar to if you were running and you pull your knee in towards your chest this way. I'm dragging my leg forward. And you can see when I do that, my leg shifts forward just a tad. And I also have to brace with my front leg to make sure that I can stay stable. So I'm going to pull my left leg in towards my nose while I resist with my right leg, trying to pull me forward. So my leg is pulling in this way. It's a scissoring motion between the two legs. I'm gonna hold that resistance the entire time and then start moving. I'm gonna use my front leg to pull me into the stretch. And I should feel a nice stretch through the front of my left thigh. And then I'm going to use my back leg to strength train against the force of my right leg to pull me back into a curved position. So my body is turning into a C position. Then I'm going to use my front leg again to pull me back into the stretch. Still resisting with my knee, but trying to pull my knee forward and then back into strength. Use your front leg to win, and now your back leg to win. Move in the range that feels good to you, even if it's just a little bit. There shouldn't be any strain on your hip or your back, just some stretch to the front, maybe a little bit of a burning feeling, or if it's working. 
Some variations on this stretch are to twist to give a little bit of rotation. So you twist towards the left to get a deeper stretch to the inner thigh here. And you can also try pulling your arms up to reverse that concave motion that we created in the strength training. So here on concave, and here I reverse into more of a convex, almost a back bend type position. So you're pulling in for strength and out for your stretch. You can choose the variation that works the best for you. Just find the tension and pull it out. Let's do one more stretch. And now we'll switch sides. So now you'll have your right leg behind you, your front leg, here is your left leg. You're going to bring your foot out just a little bit further than, uh, than your knee so that you have somewhere to lunge into. You're going to use your back leg to pull you back into a convex position. It's like I'm trying to drag my knee up and around towards my nose. Once I have that position stable, I'm going to use my left leg to pull me into the stretch. And then my back leg to pull me back. There's always resistance and always movement. Back and forth. And then you can find the variation that works for you. You can twist to the right to get some internal rotation in your hip. It just makes the stretch a little more intense. I like to think of it as like squeezing out the towel by bringing it out instead of just squeezing it. Or you can try reversing this concave motion by pulling into a convex motion, similar to a back bend. And then pulling back in to a concave position, like you're trying to recreate the fetal position. And back up to a convex position, moving in a way that feels the best for you, and finding a variation that feels best for you. Very good. Now, after doing these basic stretches, you should feel quite a difference in your strength and flexibility in your hip flexors. So now you can try your strength test by bringing your leg up, with the femur a little bit higher than the ground, and add a little resistance. Three seconds. One, two, three, and hopefully less pain or no pain in the low back and hip. Let's try the other side. One two, three, and hopefully less pain. And now let's try our flexibility test. Go ahead and lay on your back. Bring your legs down to the floor, run right straight. Bring your right leg in and grab it. And notice, if your left leg wants to pop off the floor, if it feels comfortable in that position. If it feels more comfortable, then you gain flexibility. Let's try the other side. Should be a lot easier to pull this leg in without the right leg coming up off the ground. So I hope you noticed a difference in the strength and flexibility of your psoas today. At Stretch Chi, we do a lot more than just stretch your psoas muscles. We work on the whole body and create strength and flexibility in a really fast and efficient way. For more information, go to my website at www.stretchchi.com. We have more videos, we have online streaming classes, and if you happen to be in Chicago, come in and see me.